Good morning, friends, and welcome to Tuesday, April 12th. Harold Durfee starts us off with, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. <laughs> Tuesday's devotion is found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Steve Harper. And our scripture reading is John 12, 20 to 36. Now among those who went up to the worship at the festival were some Greeks. And they came to Philip, who was from Beth Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat die, falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father, will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder, and others said, An angel has spoken to him. But Jesus answered, This voice is not for your sake. This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of the world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I... When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. And the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of, of the light. And after Jesus said this, he departed and hid from them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Jesus' final week was, among other things, a great summing up his way of accomplishing and emphasizing one last time what really matters. In today's reading, Jesus linked life, the seed, and light to describe himself, the two same two words that Jesus used in the prologue of his gospel. It's a linkage that began in creation where light engendered all of life across the spectrum from the smallest particle to the farthest star. Light enlivens as the light of the world, John 8, 12. The word was the light of all people, John 1, 4. And the desire of the Greeks to meet with Jesus is John's way of pointing this out. As the incarnation of God, as the universal Christ, Jesus did indeed draw all people to himself. 
We live in a God-saturated cosmos. The light gives life to everyone coming into the world. No one is bereft of this light. Nothing in all of creation is without it. And because the light is in us, we are drawn, as the Greeks were, to light wherever we find it. Light also exposes, and in this verse, before, just before the beginning of today's reading in 1219, the Pharisees are deeply troubled that the whole world has gone after Jesus instead of after them. As light, Jesus exposed the failures of the religious and political system that they had built up, a system that worked to their advantage. Jesus' light exposed all that, and they didn't like it, not one bit. System builders never do like it. They push back whenever light reveals that their status quo has become a sacred cow. To walk this Holy Week journey, just like John, is to walk in the light of Jesus, as Jesus did. And like Jesus, it is to become light and life for others. Let us pray. Dear God, bring us into the light to the extent that we become light. Amen. Our closing hymn is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. this whole week.